rolling with today. No matter how much you have, what we need when we are going through a test, through a battle, we need an encouraging word from the Lord. We need to feel close to a God that we know is powerful and will never leave us. Oh, I said God will. I said God will take care of you. All you have to do is just praise him and God will show up. Praise him, and God will make a visitation. If you praise him, he'll turn a situation around. If you praise him, he'll make a way out of no way. Because there's a miracle in praise. There's deliverance in praise. There's victory in praise. There's healing in praise. I want somebody to say, I'm gonna praise the Lord and I'm coming out of this rut. Everybody in the chat room, I want you to talk, I'm on my way out. I'm on my way out. Today we want to go to 2 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 6 and then we'll go to chapter 17 verses 1 and 2. I do encourage you to start at the 15th chapter when you get a chance and read that whole narrative story. But 2 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 6. Amen. And on this manner, did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment and Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel chapter 17 Verses 1, 2, and 2. Moreover, Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out. Amen. 12,000 men. And I will arise and pursue after David this night. Yes, and I will come upon him while he is weak and weary yeah. and will make him afraid. And all the people that are with him shall flee. And I will spite the king only. I will smite the king only. Today's subject, the secrets of a broken relationship. The secrets. A 
of a broken relationship. Today, I would like for you to think about the people in your life who you once held as special, someone that you admired and respected, but over the years, the person you used to admire and respect, you now hold them in contempt. And now, even though you put up with them, and even pretend that you still love them, But reality says that you have lost the fellowship that you once had with that person. What happened? It can all be traced back to a turning point that started you to lose the love and admiration for that person. I have seen it so many times. Couples who were once so close and even got married. But one of the true facts of life is that even though you thought you really knew the one that you married, but it's a reality that you really don't know somebody until you live with them. Somebody ought to say it, amen. And when you find out something about them, All right. something that you didn't know, uh -huh. it did something to you. And you have never felt that same way toward them. Can you identify with what I'm saying? You may not have even told them about it. And some have been together for many years. And this one thing, just like a ghost, hovers over your relationship. And it is the secret of a broken relationship. Although you stayed with, together with some of these years, some stayed out of convenience. If I left, I didn't have, I wouldn't have anywhere to go. So you stayed there and you took it. Some stay together because of the sake of the children. And then I'm going to hang in here till these children get grown. And when the last one leave, I'm going to say to my mate, Goodbye. I'm going to. I wish I had some prayer. Others of us have never been honest with ourselves.
We've never really told them what started us looking at them in a different way. Amen. And you have kept it a secret lo these many years. Amen. This is why so many relationships are conditional. Everybody say conditional. That says, I'm with you as long as I agree with you. But the moment you mess up, I'm out of here. Amen. I'm already on edge with you. Have you ever known anybody like that? Uh -huh. They'll be with you until you make a mistake. And then all of a sudden, I can't take that. I don't see you like I used to see you. Amen. Sometimes it's family secrets that you didn't know that before you said I do. Amen. And it's just been something that became a turning point in your relationship. Amen. One of the most admired persons in the Bible was David. God had blessed him beyond measure. David rose from being a shepherd boy that never would have been heard of if God had not called him. And elevated him from being a shepherd boy to a king. David's own father didn't think David could be much of anything but to watch the sheep. And when God sent the prophet by his father's house. God had said to the prophet, one of your sons will be a king. And I want you to call your boys in to see which one will be the next king. All of the boys got dressed up except David. He was out in the field. And as the prophet came by, he looked at each one. And one whose name was Eliab was tall, dark, and handsome. And the prophet said, Behold, I have found the king. But the word of God said to him, Don't judge him by the way that he looks. For man looks on the outer appearance. But God looks at the heart. Amen. Amen. After all of the boys had been seen, 
God had not spoken back to his preacher. Yes, sir. And he said, Are these your only boys? No, I got one more who's out there with the sheep. I don't think you want him. He said, Call him. David came in looking in the Bible says ruddy. I think he was smelling because he had been fooling with the sheep. But when he walked in the Lord said now that's my king. Amen. Whenever God approves of you, it does not matter what you look like. For the word says that man looks on the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart. Preach way. God elevated him to be a king, he was talented, he could play on the harp, that he played the evil spirit out of King Saul. Amen. Amen. He was a warrior. He could fight like a champ. You remember Goliath? Yeah. David didn't look like much to him either. But David came in one day, and you know in those days, you sent your best warrior to fight in the battle. And whatever warrior that won, then the war was over. And the Philistines had a man called Goliath. Big, bad, and ugly. Amen. And he would go out and intimidate the men of Israel. And they were scared of him. And he wanted to know, send me your best man, and I'll kill him right now. Can't you imagine that he, you don't fight him? Man, no. Fight Goliath? No. Goliath was blaspheming the name of God. And here comes the shepherd boy. And he wanted to know from his brothers, why y'all putting up with this? Who's this? This is Goliath. You better not talk too loud. He might hear you. But y'all let him talk about God like you're doing? I tell you what, you cowards. I'll fight him. Can't you hear son say now, his brother saying, you better shut your mouth, boy. fight him. How you gonna fight him? You just a little boy. Goliath is mature. He's experienced in battle and you are just a kid. I'll fight him. Well, 
and we'll begin the funeral for you next week. So they go to the king. He said, King, you're kind of embarrassed, but our little brother want to fight Goliath. Boy, do you know what you're saying? I know, King. You ready to die? Ain't gonna die. Have you heard about Goliath? I heard. And you want to fight him? Yes, sir, Mr. King. What you gonna fight him with? I got a slingshot. Of all the audacity, the unmitigated goal for somebody to let you come in here saying you're going to fight Goliath. Please, King, let me fight him. With a slingshot? He said, I'll let you fight him on one condition. And that is that you put on the armor of our soldiers. And David tried it on and it was too big for him. He said, I can't fight with this thing. But King, I'd like for you to know something. I came up on a lion one day and I killed him. I came up on a bear one day and I killed him. And if Goliath messed with me, I'll kill him too. <laughs> Any good have confidence in yourself. So Goliath looks at this young boy. Is that the best y'all got? You will send me this boy. I'll have him dead in a few minutes before lunch. But he did not know that David was proficient with the slingshot. He could hit a target 200 feet away. It was one of those sling targets. And as he started walking toward David, David said, well, 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 let you know something. I got five smooth stones in here. That when I get you, if your brothers come out, I, I, you they told me you got five brothers. I have all of them. And he went to sling that shot and he threw that rock that hit Goliath right in the head. Amen. And that was a great thug. Boom. He fell. Amen. And David, this is kind of rough, but he in those days you had to take the man's head off. And David cut the man's head off. Amen. He said, my God will help you do anything when you're right. And now, When the men went out to war, when they came back in, Saul, who was king, they said, Saul killed his thousand, but David his ten thousand. The women would embellish the whole thing. Saul got jealous of him. But because God was on David's side, he had to run for his life. 
I don't have time to tell you that whole story. But now, David becomes king of Israel. He was a charismatic young man. Y'all know the word charisma. Which means that he just drew people to him. They just loved being around him. Amen. Amen. But somewhere along the way, his favorite son, Absalom, and his best friend, Ahithophel, turned against David after so many years. They turn. Now, Ahithophel was regarded by Israel so highly that whenever he spoke, it was as if God had spoken. So the people of Israel listened to him. He and David was just like that. But now, Ahithophel turned on David. And then, he talked Absalom, his king's son, into turning on David, his own father. Amen. And to add insult to injury, Hithophel said to Absalom, I want you to go and lie with your father's women friends. I'm trying to keep you nice up in here. In other words, go to bed with all of them. That was the greatest insult for a son to have sex with the woman that his father had been with. That added insult to injury. Now, what could have happened that caused the best friend, Ahithophel, that David had to turn his back on his close friend? I suggest. that Bathsheba the woman that David committed adultery with and had her husband killed by David and her husband was real loyal research showed me and I listened to Lorraine and she talked about it one day That was Ahithophel's granddaughter. And I submit that after David did what he did, even though God had forgiven him, Ahithophel never felt the same way about David again. That was the one thing that turned him against David. I believe that he had said in his heart, I'll get you if it's the last thing I do. Now, Absalom 
had murdered his own brother Amnon who had sexually molested his sister Tamar and Absalom when Tamar was leaving her quarters Old King James Version says she rent her garment. That's she tore her garment, registering her disapproval to what had gone on. Absalom comes up and he looks and he says, "Has Amnon forced you?" He said to his sister. Don't regard this thing. Worst advice he could have given anybody. For a woman once she's been molested. It's one of the most serious crimes that anybody could ever commit on a woman. The Bible says for the next two years, Absalom said neither good or bad to Amnon. You know when folks get mad with you, they don't treat you good, they don't treat you bad, they just don't treat you. Amen. You can go and be in that presence, they will not even acknowledge you. But what Absalom couldn't do is what he said to his sister do, don't regard it. It kept on on the inside of him. And every time he looked at Amnon, he hated him. And he planned his brother Amnon's death. He killed him. And now, he runs away, and after two years, the king let him come back to the kingdom, but he couldn't look in his face. David couldn't look in his face for two years. And that made Absalom angry. Now, Ahithophel. I hope you all are following the story. Say, Son, we need a change around here. Your dad ain't no good. And what Absalom did, he stood at the gate of the palace every day and when men came to have judgments done he said my dad ain't gonna treat you right if you want good judgment let me do it amen and the text that I read said he stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Absalom was good looking, flowing hair that the women would just swoon over Absalom. And now, Ahithophel says, now, here's where we're going to handle this thing. I want you to gather together 12,000 men and we're going to overthrow your no good daddy. But what a hit the bell did not understand was that when the scripture says touch not my anointed one do my servant no harm. Amen. Now I hit 
Citadel goes public. And they said, I want you to know that we're going to take over and Absalom will be our next king. Amen. But because the people believed so much in Ahithophel, they became so violent that he ran away and committed suicide. Right. Now here comes David with his men now. Men must go and fight this battle. I hit the fellow that said to them, now if you want to really get him, wait till nighttime when they are weary. With all the young men you got, you, you can take it over. But the Bible says, but David was a warrior. Amen. And David's son Absalom started this insurrection. That's where I'm going today. January 6th, insurrection. Come on, somebody. The Republicans never expected that they would not be able to overthrow the government. Amen. Amen. Now, when David found out about what happened, that's why when you read the 50th Psalm, he says, my heart is so pain within me. The terrors of death are upon me. Fearfulness and trembling. My nerves are bad. Why? Because, if you read the 55th Psalm, he says, the one that I call my best friend, we went to church together. He knew all of my secrets. My best friend. And now he turned against me. And my own son wants to kill me. How would you have felt if something like that happening to you? Amen. But because of David's love for his son, he said, man in battle, I'm going to, to the wall. He said, no, you stay here, we'll fight. But he said to them, when you find the young man, don't kill him. I don't want my son to die. If that's what he wants, I'd give up my kingdom. That didn't sit right with his men. Here comes Absalom now, riding his horse. Tomorrow I'll be king. And he ran into an oak tree. And the limbs on that oak tree, come on somebody, caught him by his hair. And he couldn't get it loose fast enough because David's men were upon him. And they said, his daddy wants him to live. But did anybody do that? They don't die in the arm. They both got to die. Absalom and David. Absalom, I'm sorry, and Ahithophel. And they all planned and plotted against Joe Biden. <laughs> Amen. 
and some stuff is coming out now on my coffee and all the little crooks and they cannot understand that even though the popularity polls say that Biden is down but the one thing they misunderstood and that is, and I believe that Joe Biden knows the Lord. He doesn't mind talking about God. Yes, he brings up what he did when he was young. That's why he says, I trust God. Here they are saying now, we don't have time for a man like that. We'd rather have a crook. We'd rather have a man that's in love with Putin. I better leave that alone. And Putin got big enough to run and jump on Ukraine. He, he told somebody, we could take this without firing a shot. Even he didn't know, and I want you to watch this. That if God is with you, you're more than the world against you. I wish I had a witness up in here. Amen. Why did I tell this story today? It's because some of us get upset. When people are against you. But even though the world might be against you, and people may not tell you why they turned on you, that's the secret of a broken relationship. Amen. Perhaps today, in your lifetime, there were people that you trusted with your deepest secrets. And you thought you would always be together. You said to them, you like my own sister, my own brother. Yet, sometimes they may, may never tell you why they stop speaking to you. They may never tell you why they turn on you. And some people end up with nervous breakdown because if they ever told that stuff I told them, in trouble. <laughs> Amen, somebody. But that's where God comes in. And I've learned that if God be for you, who can be against you? I wish I had a witness up in here. That's why Paul says, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I heard a man say one day, if God is for us, who can be against us? I know it's who, Negroes. <laughs> I don't know what's in your life today. I don't know the battles that you have to fight. But I want to say to you, as long as you keep your hand in God's hand, as long as you keep your eyes on the prize, God will take care of you. My 
told you now, David had done some crooked stuff. Amen. Amen. But the one thing about David, he recognized his faults. And he owned his mistakes. And there are some of you who made some mistakes in your life. And you hope nobody ever finds out about it. I have to admit to you, I've done some stuff in my life that I'm not proud of. Stop looking at me, bunny. Because all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But when the preacher pointed out to David how wrong he had been, David then begins to write the 51st Psalm. Amen. So when you read that song, David is crying out to the Lord. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Then he says a little later on, I admit my shortcomings. And I'm not going to fight, but I'm asking you to have mercy on me. And brothers and sisters, we are here today by God's mercies. That's why David said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. There are some of us in here today that are still walking in shame. But let me tell you this, when God forgives you, you have no more reason to be ashamed. And sometimes we wonder why did God let this happen to me? And then we can hear the Lord saying, you're going to meet somebody else than going through what you went through. And when they see that I can bring you through, maybe they too will say, I will trust in the Lord. Can I get a witness here? And every once in a while, when I think about the story of David, I think about where the Lord has brought me from. I've had my shares of ups and downs. And yet, the Lord has promised never to leave or Forsake me. Mm -hmm. And I made up my mind. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I'm wondering today, since we've all had some losses, since we all 
have had some heartaches? Have you talked to the Lord about it? Have you asked the Lord creating me a clean heart? I'm a witness today. The Lord will answer prayer. Can I get a witness here? The Lord will bring you peace in the midst of your storm. Then anybody in here who tried the Lord. Is there anybody in here who made your own mistakes? Mm -hmm. In our society, they don't forgive fast. If you ever been to jail, they don't care if you pay for your mistakes. They'll never trust you again. But my God is able to wash us clean and give us another chance. Can I get a witness here? So I'm here to tell you today, the world may be against you, but two words, but God. Can you hear me today? Enemies may be around you, but God. You may be broke, but God. You may feel like giving up, but God. Won't he fight your battle for you? Have you ever tried him? Is he all right? If you know he's all right, say yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I came to Jesus just like a lawn. Weird. Wounded and sad. But I found in him a resting place. And who has made me glad? Some of y'all look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. You ought to be a witness today. If the Lord brought you through something, you ought to praise him right now. If the Lord kept you, you ought to praise him. Tell him thank you. And I want to tell you this, don't give up, but hold on, God's unchanging hand. If you hold on, God will fix it for you. I got to leave you now, but I heard a story mm -hmm. of a young man who got in trouble in Los Angeles, called for his father, and all the daddy had was enough to pay for a train bill. Didn't have money to buy what he wanted. But a real father would look after his son. He got on the train, it was supposed to take three days. He was so hungry that the first day it hurt him, but he said, I gotta make it. Another day, the third day, he was so hungry that he felt like giving up. So when the man came through, he said, please, is there any way you can give me something to eat? The gentleman said to him, didn't you know 
when you paid for your ticket, the food was included in your ticket. In other words, you've been suffering without a cause. Too many of us don't know that when you're saved, you get a package benefit. You get a bed and bath. Put a load chair. Won't it fix it for you? When you get on the Lord's side, He will take care of you. Somebody ought to praise Him. Some of y'all are worried right now. But if God is with you, He's more than the whole world against you. Will you give Him some praise right now? There was a young boy. who lost his mother to death. And on the day of the funeral, the choir sang a song. And they said, come ye disconsolate. And the young boy could not understand what that song meant. So when he and his father were at home after the funeral, his father was sitting there with tears in his eyes. He said, Daddy, I want to ask you a question. He said, when we went to church today, the choir was saying, come ye disconsolate, and I don't know what that means. His father said, son, what it means is when you need a friend, when you need somebody to console you, take it to Jesus. And if you don't mind, I want the choir to sing like they were singing that day. You see, there might be somebody here tonight who needs somebody to be your friend. They want to say, come.
might be somebody here tonight. You know you need prayer. Come to the altar. You might be sick. This is a recording session. But I know what God will do. He's a miracle worker. Bring your burdens to him right now. Oh, come in the house. Don't be ashamed. Stop worrying about what folks are feeling. is here right now and if you need a healing you don't have to go back out here sick somebody came in here with a financial need tonight God will make a way somehow now if you trust the Lord He's going to do it for you right now. Lord, glory be to God. The reason I know it, there have been so many times I've been down to my last down. But when I call on the Lord, He made a way somehow. And if you need a blessing tonight, size of a grain of a mustard seed. Somebody need peace in your home tonight. Thank you, Lord, for letting us come here tonight. Lord, we remember when we couldn't even come in a place like this. But you blessed us anyhow. And then, Lord, we've been able to sing tonight. We've been able to praise your holy name. And Lord, we know you are worthy. And that's why we praise you right now. You've been a friend for us. When we were sick, you've been a doctor for us. Some had to go to court. And you've been a lawyer in a courtroom. And now, Lord, we know if you did it before, you can do it again. And that's why we call on you 
right now. We can't get along without you. Somebody need you to heal a feeble body. Somebody been sick a long time. Lord, we know you're a doctor that's never lost a patient. Flee, Lord, in the name of Jesus, heal that feeble body. Somebody needs a financial blessing. Got bills due, don't know how to pay them. We know you are able to make the way out of no way. Now. Somebody's strung out on drugs. They want to get back home, but that old habit won't let them. We know you are able to heal a crack addict. You are able to heal a heroin addict. You are able to heal all manner diseases. Have mercy, Lord. Somebody needs you. been depressed a long time. We know you are able to lift the depressed spirit. Please, Lord, please, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Some of us got evil spirits. Do wrong when it seems like we can't help ourselves. But just like you did the demoniac, you are able to move that evil spirit out of our heart right now. Then, Lord, when the war is all over, when we can't cry anymore, when we can't be talked about anymore, Folk can't tell lies on us anymore. We've heard of a city where the wicked shall cease from traveling, the weary shall be at rest. Where there'll be no more crying, but we heard you shall wipe the tears from our eyes. Give us a home.